the S23 Ultra is a productivity powerhouse. This video is going to help you unlock every single productivity feature to make your phone work better for you. Let's go. I can guarantee that almost everyone who's clicked on this video is not using the S23 to their full potential. Samsung packs their phones full of productivity features that I reckon people are only using 5% of. If you're one of the people that uses more of them and you think you know what this video is going to be about, pause it right now and put in the comments what features you think are upcoming. Go on. Have you done it? Great. Let's get started because the S23 Ultra is Samsung's flagship of flagships. Now, is it Samsung's most productive smartphone? Or it's neck and neck between it and the Fold 4. They just offer different types of productivity offerings where the Fold gives you a more expansive main display to work from. The S23 Ultra allows for the bigger display plus peripherals to come in to the frame. What we're going to start with though is some of the basics. Some of the things you can do on your device right now and take advantage of that massive 6.8 inch display to use more of it for productivity. First thing of course is multi-window. Samsung has enabled multi-window to become way more accessible. Before it used to just be a really tedious task going into where your apps used to be are kept open and selecting open in multi-window. They have added much easier ways since then to make it a much easier process, removing the steps and the barriers to access it. Now, there's so many different ways. The, the one that they brought in last year was being able to two finger swipe. So you go into advanced settings and turn this on and you can swipe two fingers up from the bottom in portrait or when it's in landscape, you swipe in two fingers from the side and it will automatically put whatever window you're in into multi-window. What's worth putting on here as well is multi-window for all apps. This will force any app to make sure it works in multi-window. Even apps that don't support it from the developer's end. Samsung is coming in with brute force to make it work. So that's one way. Uh, it's probably a, a newer way. The way I like to do it is I like to drag and drop my apps. So I have the edge panels turned on, which I'll get to them in a moment, but the way the edge panels in the apps edge section in particular, I can simply swipe in from the side that I've got the edge panel set up, drag the app into whatever section of the screen I want it and activate split screen multitasking. Really helpful if I need to quickly respond to a message or if I'm doing some banking, I can have my app at the top, drag whatever information I need to get from the other app down the bottom and I've got my two apps open side by side. That might not be preferred for you. I think it's a little bit too cramped. The aspect ratio gets a little bit distorted. Maybe you don't want to do that. Well, you can also access floating apps. And again, there's multiple ways to access this. You can, again, turn on a feature where you can drag from the corner of the display and drag something into like to a pop-up window. Or again, using edge panels and apps edge, you can drag any of those apps into a pop-up window my favorite thing to do is to, let's say I'm watching a YouTube video and I'm really into it, so I don't have to pause the video or get distracted too easily and I have a message to respond to, I drag my messenger into a pop-up, part of the message, close it, the video doesn't pause, doesn't stop, I keep going. Something that's really helpful with keeping apps open in the background, so in your task switcher menu, you can go into it. If you click on an app, it does have an option to keep the app open. So this will actually lock the apps open. So even if you hit close all, this app will remain in your RAM open at all times. If it's an app you use frequently and you want to have access to whatever it is you're doing and not have it reload, it's a great thing to turn on and have it sit there in the background. Especially if you don't use a lot of other apps and you just need to keep closing those, it'll keep these ones open. Makes for a really productive experience. The other sort of multitasking, multi-window experience that works quite nicely is drag and drop. You can, let's say you're attaching something into a notes file that you're working on, or you're attaching a photo into a message. You can drag from the top, drop it into the bottom and it'll attach. It'll go into the notes file just the way you want it, just the way you need it to. Very easy, very basic, much more productive on your smartphone. As I spoke about, 
there is the edge panels. Now the edge panels are a great feature that Samsung introduced when they first brought out the edge displays with the Galaxy Note Edge. That was a separate sort of thing. They refined it a little bit more with the S6 Edge. And by refined, I mean they took everything that was productive about it and just made it a people edge where you can quickly call a contact from the side. Over time, they've reintroduced and added new things and opened it up to third-party developers where now there is a plethora of things that you can do straight from the edge panel on your phone. The great thing is it used to just be an edge feature exclusive where now it's opened up to all Samsung devices. They realized we don't need a curved display to give people the option to swipe in from the side. Great work. What the Edge panel has got for productivity that I really like is the aforementioned Apps Edge, which allows you to go and swipe in from the right or left, wherever you've got them set up. Have your most used apps sitting there in a dock and then drag them or open them whichever window you're on. So you could be on Twitter, you need to go to Instagram. Rather than swiping out of Twitter, finding Instagram in your app drawer, simply swipe in, access Instagram. Really simple. And also at the top of it, there's a little dotted line and above them is the most recent apps that you've used. So again, allows for really quick switching back and forth between apps that you use quite frequently. But that's not all there is to it. Yes, there is the contacts that you can add in in another edge panel. But perhaps a really useful one is Tasks Edge. Tasks Edge isn't just the app, it's a specific task within the app. So think about when you drop a shortcut onto your Windows desktop, and that shortcut necessarily isn't just for the certain whole program, it can be for something within the program, like a document. Tasks Edge is a little bit like that, however, rather than it being the whole, the whole app or a document, it's a certain function. So it could be open up the selfie camera. It could be open up a specific web page. It could be call a specific person. With People Edge, you have to select the contact and then call a message. This is a direct phone call. Could be a video call task. There's a whole numerous amount of things that you can probably see on the screen now that give you the flexibility to bypass certain steps and go straight into that task within that application. So you can go in and set those up to where you like it and have it accessible with a swipe from the right hand side or the left, whichever is your fancy. Another thing from the edge panel that you can have in there is your reminders panel. Your reminders panel allows you to see what reminders you have upcoming. You can add reminders in as well as click on individual ones to see what the reminder is so you get a bit more context. And that brings me to the actual reminders app. Samsung introduced it as Bixby Reminders. I don't even remember how long ago, but it's been there for a while. However long Bixby has been there. Let's not talk about Bixby today. The Reminders app is time, place, and occasion based. So it means that you can set your reminders based on time of day, or you can set your reminders based on your location, or you can set reminders based on an occasion. So you could say and call up, I'm not gonna say it because it might activate some of your phones, Mate, probably, let's be real, probably not. You probably haven't got it turned on. But hi, Bixby. Please set a reminder to have me put the bins out when I get home from work. So when you get home, as soon as you enter your home location, that reminder will pop up and let you know, put the bins out. And you can have that be something that's frequent. You can have it just be for that day. But you can add in different locations. So if you wanted to add in your regular grocery store that you go and visit, you can say, remind me when I get to the groceries to pick up milk. And it's the moment you pull into that grocery store, that reminder is popping up and letting you know. It's a really handy app and can really allow for productivity. Because uh, if you want to use it for work, you can also tie it in to your calendar. The calendar and the reminder app can intertwine with each other, which I think is quite smart. Because not everyone wants to use their calendars for reminders. Not everyone wants to use their reminders for the calendar stuff. So you can keep it separate, but you can also have it all synced in. A lot of people say Samsung shouldn't make their own apps. I disagree. Samsung's first party apps provide a really great experience. So they're just some of the apps that you can use on your phone to be a bit more productive. But now we're going to take a bit of a look at how we can bring the phone stuff and intertwine it into PC a bit more of an ecosystem productivity. First thing, obvious one to take a look at is Samsung DeX. Now I'm going to do an entire video on every single way you can use Samsung DeX in the near future. So what I'm going to focus on more so with this video is how to use DeX 
alongside your PC. Because there's two different ways that you can intertwine Samsung DeX with your laptop or desktop. That is either via cable for the strongest connection, or you can use it wirelessly. If you ask me, the wireless DeX is by far the most seamless and frictionless setup you can have because you effectively take your phone, connect it wirelessly to your laptop, and if you have a dual setup where you have your laptop screen and a monitor, you can have DeX running on one and your PC running on the other. And what it allows for is basically just control over your smartphone and your laptop without even having to pick up your phone. Respond to notifications, control all your apps. You can run PC and phone apps simultaneously. Sometimes there's apps that you can't get on your computer that are much easier to use on your phone. Run them through DeX. Use your keyboard and your mouse and interact with them in that way. It just has this really nice flow where you can use both devices from one. But perhaps the best part about it is the drag and drop. If you have files that you need to move seamlessly between the two, and let's say you don't have a Samsung laptop, Samsung DeX will give you that opportunity to drag and drop files back and forth. And it works in much the same way that something like QuickShare does, in that it uses the wireless connectivity between the two to send from one to the other. So if I wanted to send a whole bunch of videos from my phone to drop it onto my computer, select the videos, drag them, drop them. If I needed to then send something back from my laptop to my phone, I do the same process and it happens really quickly. It's a very powerful tool and one that I think a lot of people should use a lot more if they have the opportunity to, especially if they're at home because it, it does need a Wi-Fi connection and they both need to be on the same Wi-Fi to work. The alternative to Samsung DeX is linked to Windows. Samsung struck up a partnership with Microsoft back with the Note 10 launch where you can have your smartphone and your PC running in sync with each other, again, wirelessly. The advantage to this versus Samsung DeX is your phone and your laptop do not need to be on the same network to have some functionality. You can pick up your messages. You can have access of your 2,000 of your most recent photos. You can actually drag those photos into your computer as well. Now, I don't believe it's the full resolution in this way. However, just the fact you can quickly grab something from your phone quite convenient. Let's say you're working on the road and you don't have access to a Wi-Fi network to be on the same network. Your phone can be connected to data. Your laptop can be connected to the, the shopping center Wi-Fi or your hotel Wi-Fi or whatever it is. You can still interoperate the two devices together quite seamlessly. So Link to Windows gives you that basic functionality from there. However, when you do have it connected to a Wi-Fi network, you can amplify things a bit more. This is where you can access up to six of your favorite smartphone apps on your PC at the same time. There's actually a dedicated apps menu on the Link to Windows platform on the PC, which allows you to pin your favorites to like a bar at the top and launch them. And it, the only difference is it does launch them in a screen mirrored format, so you can't resize the windows like you can in Samsung DeX, but you don't have to have it open on your phone screen. So your phone can still kind of be independent. You can answer the phone, you can control music for Link to Windows, the other thing too is its continuity of websites. So if you're starting a website using the Samsung internet browser, again, another video coming on that sometime in the future, you can easily pick that website up on your laptop. So if you wanted to transfer it to the bigger display, you have that freedom to do so. Something that's closely linked to link to Windows is Samsung Flow. It has been around a lot longer. Samsung have been known to build their own solutions for things when other brands are lacking a bit behind. It sometimes takes other brands a lot longer to realize, oh, ecosystem's important. Samsung know that it was, it's just they had to build a lot of the stuff themselves. I might actually do a video on Samsung features that aren't around anymore, that were ecosystem features that worked really well. Drop a like and subscribe if you think that'd be something you wanna see and leave a comment over which features you might want me to, to take a look at. Samsung Flow is one of those, I guess, legacy features that have been around that actually was born out of Samsung SideSync. Wow, that's a long time ago. Samsung Flow actually works on both Samsung's tablets and their phones. So you can connect the phone to tablet and phone to PC. When it's connected to your PC, it works much in the same vein as Link to Windows does. The only difference here is that the screen mirroring function on Samsung Flow 
is streets ahead over what's on linked to windows the on-screen controls that control your phone are way better you can much more easily use your mouse compared to relying on the touchscreen necessity that linked to windows provides you the same sort of drag and drop functionality as samsung dex exists in samsung flow as well so again this is a really great transfer file system if you need it because it works really fast and again it's a drag and drop type thing if you need to transfer something from your phone though you select it on your phone hit share samsung flow and it'll connect now they are some of my favorite productivity features you might be wondering why i haven't spoken about the obvious one s pen and samsung notes the s pen i've done an entire video on already so go up up here i'll also link in the description every feature you can use your s pen for is in that video samsung notes however that's another video entirely so i will make sure i'll put a most comprehensive samsung notes video together and that'll be out sometime in the near future as well so that's it again for this week make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel and put the bell icon on it really does let you know when my next video has come out otherwise between now and next week come hang out with me on twitter and instagram and i guess i'll see you in the next video you